from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham. He's a key member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. He's been to Libya several times, including last month. Also, many years ago, met with Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the president, first and foremost. Uh, are you ready to say job well done, mission accomplished? Mr. President, thank you for your good work. Well, I want to thank the administration for uh, jumping on board uh, when they did, but I think it's fair criticism to say that if we'd imposed a no-fly zone early on, we wouldn't have had to wait to uh, Misrata, where the whole city was under siege and a lot of people were about to be massacred. I'm glad we intervened before it got worse in Misrata. I'm very disappointed we took American air power off the table at a time that it could have ended the war. But having said all of that, I'm glad Gaddafi is dead and a new day dawns. And this president and this Congress and this world will be judged by what happens next more than what happened in the past. All right, so let's talk about the, what the Libya <coughs> needs right now. You just heard the Libyan ambassador mm -hmm. appeal to the United States. I know he did it to you when you were there with Senator McCain right. not that long ago to Secretary Clinton right. yesterday uh, to send over one of these huge U.S. Navy hospital yeah. ships uh, to help with the wounded, with the injured in Libya and to open up U.S. military hospitals and other hospitals in Europe. You've raised this issue with the Obama right. administration. Uh, is the U.S. going to do it? I hope so. Uh, they're sitting on th we're sitting on $34 billion of frozen Libyan assets that can be used to reimburse us. The French and the Germans already have signed agreements with the Libyans to provide medical treatment. Uh, we have two medical naval hospitals. One could be sent to Libya uh, to provide some acute care. Opening up Landstuhl military base in Germany to the wounded in Libya not only would be the right thing to do, it would solidify our relationship for decades to come. We've urged the administration to do this, and they're taking it very seriously. That's not cheap, uh, but what you say is that the Libyans, who have export a lot of oil potentially, they're going to reimburse the you U.S. Got it. for all of this, plus everything it costs to liberate uh, Libya from Gaddafi? Yeah, I don't know if they're going to reimburse us for everything it costs to liberate uh, uh, it's about a billion dollars, but they've certainly said they would be willing to reimburse us for any medical treatment or infrastructure support we, su we provide. This is a big deal for the world, not just uh, Libya and the United States. If we can get the Libyan oil production back up and running, that's more supply for us here at home coming from now a friendly nation. So it's in our national security economic interest to help the Libyan people get back on their feet and to make sure a vacuum's not created in Libya on the security front and governance front like uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Would you support uh, the U.S., the U.N., the, the NATO allies doing in Syria what it has just done in Libya? You know, that's a really good question. The, uh, I, I support the idea of isolating Assad and letting the world know that his time is up. Uh, we don't have the support against Syria like we did with uh, Libya, but the Arab League is talking about kicking him out. But when it comes to Assad and ending his terror, I hope we will be as bold as we have been in the past. And uh, if you could stop Assad or take him out and replace him, that's a big blow to Iran because he's one of Iran's more reliable allies. But I don't think we need military action at this point. Senator Graham, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Up next, uh, some of the family.